Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. On August 6, 2007, the pillars in the Crandall Canyon mine gave out, causing the roof to collapse and trapping six miners beneath the surface. What happened? We'll find out at the end of this video. But first, before it can support structures, pavements, or other heavy loads, soil must be evaluated by geotechnical engineers to predict its behavior under force. One series of tests are the Atterberg Limits tests. And in today's video, we have the top things you need to know. Number one, what are the Atterberg Limits tests? The Atterberg Limits tests establish the moisture contents at which fine-grained clay and silt soils transition between various states. Number two, what are the four states of clay soil? When moisture content increases, clay and silt soils go through four distinct states of consistency, solid, semi-solid, plastic, and liquid. Number three, why are the Atterberg limits tests important? Well, as we just mentioned, when moisture content increases, clay and silt soils go through four stages of consistency. Each stage has differences in strength, consistency, and behavior. The Atterberg limits tests define the boundaries for each state, which allows a geotechnical engineer to predict the behavior of soil and design appropriately. Number four, what are the Atterberg limits tests? There are three main tests that are usually included in the Atterberg limits tests. The liquid limit test, which determines the water content at which soil changes from a plastic to a liquid state. The plastic limit test, which measures the water content at which the soil changes from a plastic to a semi-solid state. And the shrinkage limit test, which determines the water content where the further loss of moisture does not cause a decrease in specimen volume. And finally, number five, when do you perform Atterberg limits tests? These soil tests are most important when you're trying to build with or on plastic soils. But now that we've covered the basics of the Atterberg limits tests, let's return to the Crandall Canyon mine disaster. Very early in the morning of August 6, 2007, 10 men were mining coal in the Crandall Canyon mine in Emory County, Utah when the roof collapsed. The imploding earth released so much energy that it registered as a 3.9 earthquake at the University of Utah seismograph station miles away. A miner at the surface said the air rushing out of the tunnel almost knocked over his pickup truck. And when the dust settled, it was clear that six of the miners on duty that morning had not made it out of the mine. At the time of the collapse, the miners were excavating coal using the room and pillar method, a process that utilizes a machine called a continuous miner to cut out coal from a large area. The problem is that huge pillars must be left intact to support the 1,500 feet of rock sitting on the roof of the mine. These pillars contain considerable quantities of coal, so mine owners often engage in retreat mining, a procedure where miners pull coal from the pillars and collapse the mine behind them as they retreat from an area. As you can imagine, this is a hazardous operation and small errors in strength and safety calculations can lead to disaster, which is exactly what happened on that August morning. A flawed engineering analysis may have allowed the mine operators to remove too much material from several pillars, which then failed and collapsed. When the pillars toppled, the mine's sandstone roof shifted and dropped a foot, shattering the remaining pillars. The residual coal from these pillars, no longer under enormous pressure, expanded violently, filling the mine within seconds. Rescue attempts were immediately deployed, but it was later determined that the trapped miners likely had little chance of surviving the initial collapse. The tragedy was further compounded when a second collapse claimed the lives of three rescue workers. In the end, 
nine men perished due to a flawed engineering analysis and inadequate engineering review procedures. While in this case the error was likely not related to the Atterberg limits test, there are many instances of mine or excavation accidents that can be attributed to improper or incomplete soil testing. For example, a slope failure that killed 10 workers at a pit mine in Guyana could have been prevented through basic geotechnical testing. Thus, if you ever engage in excavation work yourself, be sure to first commission a geotechnical study that covers all necessary tests, including, if need be, the Atterberg limits tests. But what do you think? Do you have any stories about geotechnical testing? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening, and more to come.